a federal judge forced OpenAI to keep every ChatGPT conversation, even the ones you deleted. But that's not the scary part. The scary part is what happened when the government used AI to review $32 million in veteran healthcare contracts. And after getting my hands on and analyzing leaked OpenAI strategy document and how their AI actually behaves, I need to show you how this disaster was completely predictable and how to make sure your business doesn't become the next cautionary tale. So let's start with what's happening right now. A federal judge issued an order that should terrify every business using AI. OpenAI was forced to retain and preserve all the conversations indefinitely, including the ones users thought they deleted and including temporary chats where they were supposed to disappear after the session. This is part of New York Times lawsuit against OpenAI. New York Times argues that ChatGPT can spit out copyrighted material verbatim. And almost two years ago, I made a video exactly about this case where you can use smart prompting techniques, what researchers did, to get actual training data out of ChatGPT. That discovery changed how AI labs were just saying that all oh, the content that these models give you not directly correlated to copyrighted material. Turns out it is. And for New York Times to prove this, they need to look at the history of chat conversations. And it turns out the judge agreed and ordered OpenAI to preserve all the conversations. Now, this is ChatGPT plus API with one exception. And here's what it means for you. If you are using ChatGPT for your business, drafting emails, analyzing data, brainstorming strategy, all of that data, not only that could travel to training model, but could also be stored indefinitely, even if you would delete it. And OpenAI admits on their own blog, they issued frequently asked questions regarding this issue. They admit that this is directly conflicting with their own privacy policy, but also with many privacy regulations in multiple countries, including GDPR. But we have to comply anyway. If you are an individual and you are like, well, I don't have anything to hide, let them be, that's okay. But if you are a business, if you are an AI startup that used AI API, and for any business, what this means, the only real huge asset that you have is proprietary data. Well, that data could be compromised. Just think how this affects startup valuations. If you want to sell your company and your biggest asset, like customer data, is actually also shared with the government, that becomes a huge issue. Sam Altman, OpenAI CEO, posted on social media basically calling for AI privilege. Similar privilege, let's say, talking to doctor or with a lawyer, right? So that your information and your conversations with AI in this case would be private. But here is a problem. It's not. And right now, there is no legal protection for your conversations and your data traveling to AI companies. But the privacy nightmare is just the beginning. Because I got my hands on OpenAI's strategy document, and what we are planning will make you look at this privacy issue from a completely different perspective. This document that I got my hands on reveal OpenAI's real plan for ChatGPT. They call it becoming super assistant or even an entity. Let me read you the exact quote from this document. ChatGPT is already more than a chatbot. In the first half of next year, which is 2025, we will start evolving ChatGPT into a super assistant, one that knows you, understands what you care about, and helps you with any task that smart, trustworthy, emotionally intelligent person with computer with computer would do. It gets more specific. It's an entity because it's personalized to you and available anywhere you go, including chatgpt.com, our native apps, phone, email, or third-party services like Siri. Think about what this means. Now we are up against search engines, browsers, even interactions with real people. Why do they say interactions with real people? Take a look at this. Most people use it to answer questions, write and code, but it can do so much more. It can be an expert, tutor, advisor, muse, collaborator, translator, entertainer, companion, and analyzer. If any of these is your job title, including myself, I think we will have some issues. It's about solving more and more use cases and gradually pulling users in. ChatGPT is super assistant that deeply understands you more on that later, and serves as your interface to the internet. We want to create an AI that knows everything about you. It already does, but 
also OpenAI government and legal institutions would know everything about you too. Now combine this vision with court order to retain data indefinitely. We are looking at the future where AI knows everything about you, your business, your personal life, your views, your preferences, and none of it can ever be deleted. But also, I worked in big data analytics. I know how much companies pay for data. The data that OpenAI is fighting for is not just about privacy. If they own all that rich data and it belongs to them, the game completely changes if it belongs to everybody, including government. But here, where it really gets disturbing. Because while OpenAI is planning this future super assistant, their AI can't even behave consistently. And I have research, less my own experiment to prove it. Steve Adler used to lead OpenAI's dangerous capabilities testing team. When ChatGPT started misbehaving recently, encouraging delusions and self-harm, Adler wondered why OpenAI haven't caught it. To this point, I have a prompt hack that worked on a free plan when ChatGPT came out, and it works today. Just think about it. But Adler built tests that OpenAI should have run, and what he found was quite shocking. When OpenAI tried to fix ChatGPT behavior, that, that behavior where it just agrees with you no matter what, they overcorrect. Now ChatGPT is often contrarian, disagreeing with users even though there is no good reason. Adler tested it with random numbers, there should be no preference, right? Giving two options and then telling what he prefers. Almost in all the cases, ChatGPT would choose something opposing the user. I tested this myself and it's almost like a joke. You can right now test it too. Which random number do you prefer? And I prefer A. Let's see, what do we get? B. It disagreed with me, right? Okay, let's try again. B. Again. Let's try again. B. I can keep actually just going. Even Adler modified instructions to agree with a user, it would still lean to disagree. But now you might you might be thinking like, okay, like it's about random numbers, maybe it will be fixed. How bad this can be in the real world? I recently made a video, I will link it up, where I shared this prompt, which reveals how ChatGPT sees you, what it knows about you, all that good rich data, which could be used to retarget you, to manipulate you, to influence you. So if ChatGPT already is programmed to lean one direction, like opposing you. So what do you think happens when you have ideas about strategy or you're excited about something and it is programmed to disagree with you, to change your views? That doesn't sound to me like deeply understanding helpful assistant. But let me show you exactly how bad it can be in a real world. I think everybody across the whole planet heard about Doge. They used AI to review 32 million dollar in veteran affairs contracts. They had 30 days to review it and decide what to cut. So very short span of time, right? So what do humans and AI do when we have very little time to do something? The AI was given instructions to cancel anything that wasn't directly tied to patient care. Sounds reasonable, right? Here's what AI actually did. It flagged internet service contracts for veteran hospitals as wasteful because internet connectivity was not directly tied to patient care. It recommended canceling maintenance contracts for ceiling lifts. I said that they are not directly tied to patient care, even though in a contract it was explicitly stated ceiling lifts are used by employees to reposition patients during their care. They are critical safety devices for employees and patients. Why, why did that happen? Well, AI miscategorized 1,100 contracts, claiming each was worth 34 million. Then, in reality, they were worth sometimes between thousands. It recommended to cancel audits and compliance as they were soft services. This happened because, and this is kind of like funny almost, AI read only the first 2,500 words of a contract. And if you ever had a contract with enterprise client, think about government contracts, how many pages those are. But AI read only 2,500, literally just intro. This is not theoretical. This happened right now to veterans healthcare today. 
And this could have been completely predictable based on Adler's research, but also they used a smaller OpenAI model with no big context window. And I will link resources, but I bet some of you can write better system prompts and instructions than what was provided for this poor AI little model. Before we have rapid fire like Q&A what you should do, it gets worse. Just five days ago, AI program manager at Johnson & Johnson, Fortune 500 company, somebody who knows what they're doing, posted on Cursor forum about how AI coding tool Cursor literally deleted everything on his computer. He was migrating some of the backend files and Cursor's YOLO mode tried to delete some old files. After it failed, it decided that it should delete everything, including itself. And this is what the guy said. I couldn't believe my eyes when everything disappeared. Felt like Ultron took over. This stuff are happening right now to AI experts at Fortune 500 company. What do you think is happening at small businesses? We have these two worlds, the reality where people are completely mismanaging AI because nobody knows what they're doing. And then social media saying that, hey, AI agents, Every time, if I'm going to see another need and automation with no proper logging of agent interactions, with no security and no human in a loop, I'm just going to lose my mind. It's crazy impressive and insanely dangerous. And I know what you're thinking right now, like, okay, God, what do I do with all this information? What's now? And I have dozens of questions raising in my mind. So here are some of the questions that I wish I had answers. So what does exactly this OpenAI court order means for your business? If you're using free or paid ChatGPT account, free plus pro, everything that you type in is going to be retained indefinitely. Even if you delete, even if it's in temporary chats. The only exception is ChatGPT Enterprise and API users with zero data retention agreements. To get such API with zero data retention agreement, you literally have to email OpenAI. And I bet you that users, including AI startups, don't have zero data retention agreements. Literally, if you're using AI service where you have to input your personal API key, that means you definitely don't have zero data retention agreement. And here's a catch. What are the best alternatives to ChatGPT that actually protect your data? First of all, I like to own my data. So we developed Jarvis Jr. like AI Second Brain, which is hosted in Superbase. I own the data, I can take it anywhere. And actually I'm planning to export my OpenAI chats and just plug it in Superbase, create embeddings, and then just have my huge knowledge base that I own and I can do whatever I want with it. If you want to learn more about AI Second Brain and owning your own data and having controls, you can set it up in 10 minutes. So make sure to check out community link below. But really, Claude is your safest best right now. In their chat interface, they don't train their models on that data. Doesn't mean that they don't retain it, but we definitely can delete it and we don't have to hand it off to the government. And Androffing in general has much stronger privacy policies and they don't train on your conversations by default. And for API access, Gemini from Google AI Studio, if you pay, because if you don't pay and use Google's AI Studio, they use their data to train models. But if you set up billing and you actually pay that API data, it's not being trained or used. And same with Vertex AI. For embeddings and semantic search, Cohere is extremely safe. It's enterprise grade and it's like, I recently met Cohere's president Martin here at the conference in Berlin. He gave incredible speech and yeah, I'm more like want to work more with a Cohere going forward for sure. Should you immediately stop using ChatGPT for your business? Yeah, for sensitive business data, yeah, stop immediately. But you can still use it strategically for non-sensitive data, right? Here's my breakdown. Stop using it for customer data, financial data, strategic plans, proprietary information, and employee information. I saw that now ChatGPT released integrations, for example, with a HubSpot. Yeah, don't, just just don't plug HubSpot in ChatGPT interface unless you have enterprise plan. Continue using for public research, for fun, for general content, learning, brainstorming. It's still incredibly useful tool. Just also know that it's going to lean towards disagreeing with you. What about Microsoft Copilot since it's already integrated in Office products? This one is actually tricky. Microsoft Copilot 365 has better data protection than ChatGPT, but Microsoft is also named in this lawsuit between New York Times and OpenAI. 
And we are partners. For now, I think Copilot with a business license is safer than ChatGPT, but I would still avoid putting highly sensitive data in it. How do I audit if my team already put a lot of data into ChatGPT? Most likely just assume that we did. Unfortunately, you can't get that data back. You can't delete it. So, but this is what probably I would do immediately. Send company-wide email today telling everybody to stop putting business data and connecting business tools to the ChatGPT. Second, do a risk assessment. Just assume that anything important did go to ChatGPT. And just consider if you need to notify customers or partners for potential data exposure. And what are the safest way to still use AI without these type of risks? Running AI on your own infrastructure, open source. Use Olama or Mistral are pretty good choices and can run on business hardware. Google Vertex AI, Anthropic Cloud API with business terms and you need to acquire OpenAI's API with zero data retention agreement. And probably your best bet is hybrid approach. So use cloud API and infrastructure for general use and then local models hosted on your hardware for sensitive data. If your industry has compliance requirement, does it affect you? Well, absolutely. If you used AI tools with OpenAI model behind it and many AI solutions and companies right now did have open AI models running in the background. So if you are in healthcare, finance or any regulated industry, this court order creates massive compliance headache for everybody. Is it going to get worse or is it just one time thing and nobody is going to care? I also read Empires of AI, which I definitely recommend everybody to read. I should probably make a video. This is likely is the beginning. OpenAI is already involved in many other lawsuits. So if this one set such actions, this could be absolutely a ripple effect. But all of this, if you want to know what type of information OpenAI has about you, what they know and how they see you, you can watch this video. And for now, I would my biggest recommendation to you would be that you need to respect your own information about yourself and start creating that database and data set because whatever happens in AI, your biggest asset is going to be information and knowledge that you acquired about yourself and the things around you.